Hey booktube, it's Chelsea the Reading Outlaw here to do a my October TBR for you guys. October has already started so here we go. Um, I moved away from the wall. I think having my walls are kind of like a creamy yellow color so I think being more in front of them threw off like the white balance of my camera. I think that's why the last couple videos were so yellow. My apologies. I'm figuring it out folks you just get to be lucky enough to figure it out with me so as always with the TBRs um, I will show you the stuff I don't have and then I'll show you the stuff I do have and of course any or all of these books might change hey it's my prerogative right um, so let's first talk about the audiobooks I want to read in the month of October. I've already started all of them, but I definitely want to get them finished. The first one is called Salt, Sugar, Fat, How the Food Giants Hooked Us by Michael Moss. This is some kind of niche nonfiction reading. Um, I am always really interested in nutrition politics and food politics and kind of all of those, how all of those things intertwine. So this is a nonfiction book looking at those three key ingredients, salt, sugar, and fat, and how the food industries have manipulated those ingredients over the years to um, change the flavor of food, change the way we view food and want food and all of these things. It's really interesting to look into um, psychology and sociology and business and advertising and kind of all of these things. Um, it's really long. It's like 14 discs long. So there's that. Um, but that is currently my in the car book. And then I'm flipping back and forth between my on my phone books. <laughs> Isn't reading in America great guys or just reading in the 21st century in general. It's wonderful. So many books all over the place. <laughs> and then on my phone, I'm switching back and forth between the art of asking by Amanda Palmer which I tried reading in paper and I didn't love, but I had several people tell me that the audiobook was um, kind of a better format. You, you get to hear her read it, which I think always improves a book um, if you're listening to it on audio, having the author read it. And I also heard that there are like music snippets and her humor kind of comes across more in the audiobook and all of that is true. So I'm currently listening to that. I'm also using audio to start getting through Words of Radiance. Uh, I'm listening to this on Overdrive because on Overdrive you can adjust the speed playback. So I'm currently listening to Way of Kings at twice the speed. Or not Way of King, Words of Radiance. Sorry, Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson, which is the second in the Stormlight Archives book. And I'm currently listening to that at twice speed, so hopefully it won't take quite as long to get through. Um, I'm just about caught up with where I left off at when I was reading physically, so I'm only like 10 pages in, something like that. But um, I'm really enjoying the narrators. They actually have two narrators, a male and a female. One for uh, Shaylin and one for Kaladin and Dalinar and all of the male characters. So I really like that choice. I think that that's a really interesting choice and I'm really enjoying both of those narrators. Um, so I'm hoping to wrap up all of that this month. Although, who knows? Because as we've talked about before, Words of Radiance is ginormous. <laughs> um, digitally, I am reading a couple of things. I'm doing a buddy read of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy with Caitlin and James from Reading Musical.ly, who I will link to below. And we have just started on that. I am only, uh, I think only 10% of the way through. So, and it's not a very long book. So maybe like 15, 20 pages. And it's really, really good. Douglas Adams has a really, really witty writing style. He's very, very dry. He's just got a very good sense of humor. I'm really liking the way that the science fiction book is structured so far with the references to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy kind of leading us into whatever is going to be happening in that chapter or in that event. Sorry, guys. My allergies are off the chain right now. If you can tell, that's why I like can barely open my eyes, but I apologize. I wanted to get this video filmed because it's already October. <laughs> but yeah, so that is currently going on. That's one of my buddy reads. Um, I'm taking a little bit of a slow read with that one because I am still in some science fiction hangover from the long review, the long way to a small angry planet, which I will have a very long, very gushing, very spoilery review up for in the another in the next couple of days. Suffice to say, best science fiction book I've ever read period, period. But because of that, um, it's a little hard getting back into anything else that's science fiction because I don't want to malign other books because they don't live up to a book I already read. So I'm taking it a little bit slower with Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and also going through kind of my surefire slump for not having that happen, like breaking, not a slump, but kind of like loosening a book's hold on you after you've read it. And I am reading something completely opposite on the spectrum. So also digitally, I'm reading Nowhere But Here by Katie McGarry, which I heard recommended on Sarah's channel, Sarah from Books and Junk. 
who I will link also down below. This is a like YA contemporary fantasy about Emily and Oz, and Oz is a like junior prospect or is about to be a prospect for this motorcycle club. And anybody who knows me knows that my love for Sons of Anarchy is like disturbingly deep. <laughs> so the minute I heard Sarah mention this, um, and I know that she reads enough contemporary YA to kind of know what she's talking about. And so she mentioned that and she mentioned motorcycle clubs and I was sold. So I'm about uh, a couple chapters into that one and it's going okay. It's a little clunky in certain areas, but that's kind of what I've come to expect from, um, YA contemporary romance. So it's not awful in that regard. It's not like the best book I've ever read, but it's definitely doing the job of kind of separating me from the genre of science fiction and fantasy, which is what I wanted it to do. And lastly, because it's October and not to keep talking about Sarah, but much like Sarah, I also usually read a Neil Gaiman book in October. This time I'm reading more short stories. Usually if I read short stories, I read Fragile Things because one of my number one favorite short stories of all time is in that book. It's called October in the Chair. This time I decided to do a little different, so I am reading Smoke and Mirrors by Neil Gaiman, uh, which is another short story collection. I'm just into the first one, which is about a lovely older lady who finds the Holy Grail in a junk shop when she's out shopping. I don't really know what happens yet. Other than that, that's literally all I've read. But Neil Gaiman is so perfectly quirky and weird and odd that, I mean, how can you go wrong? It's the perfect time of month for that. So that wraps up the digital and audio components of my reading for the month. Let's go ahead and talk about the physical stuff. So first things first, I have a couple of graphic novels. The first one is The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. They cover up the uh, author and illustrator with the barcode in my library. So it is written by Ryan North, illustrated by Erica Henderson. This just looks so darn adorable. It's very cartoony and from what I understand it is literally just about a female hero named Squirrel Girl. I'm not sure if she like goes to a school. Yeah. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I think she's just going to a regular college. I don't think she is um, going to like it's not like a mutant academy or like a superhero school or anything like that. Although, although I love those stories. In this one she is just simply going to regular old college, but she's having to navigate her life as Squirrel Girl. Uh, there she is right on the front with a bunch of the other kind of Marvel Universe characters. I first heard about this recommended over on um, Get Booked, which is a Book Riot podcast of recommendations, which I will also link to down below. And they did a graphic novel episode and this came up and Amanda basically just kept talking about how funny it is and how cute it is and how much it's full of good like body positivity and female friendships and all of those good buzzwords that let me know that a book is going to be kind of right in my wheelhouse. So that is The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl by Marvel. I am so super excited. And then next up we have um, another horror comic. I read one horror comic not too long ago. There's a review that's coming up so I won't show anything other than the cover. This is Witches by Scott Snyder. And I was talking to Amanda Eagle about it and she recommended another Scott Snyder pick which is Severed. How creepy is that? So fucking scary. And basically from what I can understand, a, a boy kind of sets out on the road to find his father. His father's kind of like a wandering minstrelly kind of thing. It takes place in like the Great Depression. Um, but then on the road he meets like a super scary something. I'm trying to find like, and then the art style. It's not quite as bright as Squirrel Girl, obviously, and it's definitely got a little bit more of this, like, dirty noir kind of feel, but I'm assuming, or guessing, that's largely uh, time period related. But yes, looks very scary. That looks like a wraith on the front to me, but maybe not. But any story involving old cars and the word severed uh, has to be good, right? So that's another one in the Halloween read category. Those are the only two graphic novels I have. You know me, I like to leave my graphic novel glory category open for, like, whatevs comes up. It's like my outlet if I don't really feel like sticking to the rest of the TBR. Um, okay, this video is getting incredibly long, so let's move right along to the other stuff. First, we'll talk about the nonfiction. I only have two of these because I have so many other books juggling on the pile. The first one is one that I will be reading no matter what, and it's called Sisters-in-Law by Linda Hirsch Hirschman. Yeah, Hirschman. How Sandra Day O'Connor and Ruth Bader Ginsburg went to the Supreme Court and changed the world. Uh, I feel like I don't have to say anything else about this and why it's going to be fucking amazing. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the notorious RBG, is my spirit animal. She is my twin flame. 
And it's this one right here for any of you who aren't super into politics. <laughs> and then Sandra Day O'Connor, like what is better than reading about uh, lady friends and lady power and politics and how they got some shit done, guys. It's a big one. And so the next one I'm reading is kind of also, uh, sorry, I hit the tripod. Uh, and by tripod, I mean stack of books. I have my camera <laughs> balanced on. Uh, next up, we have another one that's a little bit kind of still in that Halloween-y vein. It's called Man Eater, The Life and Legend of an American Cannibal. I heard about this from Liberty Hardy in her newsletter, um, Friends and Comes Alive, which I will again try and link to down below, her tiny letter. This is basically about a man who, I don't know where his name is. Let's see. Oh, Alfred G. Packer. And basically... He walks into the woods one day, the winter woods, with a group of six other men and pretty much comes out in the summer and they're all dead, except him. And nobody really knows what happens. And, they're and there was cannibal activity, but nobody really knows why. Nobody really knows whether this guy killed them all and ate them or whether they died of natural causes or whether there was like other games afoot. Nobody really knows. So this is a book all about that guy and what happened to him is, you know, investigatory journalism into cannibalism at its finest right here, guys. And then we have the fiction. Oh boy. Okay. 11 minutes in. Here we go, guys. Game faces. We're almost done. The first on the fiction is for me a reread. It is a discovery of witches. I really like to reread this book around this time of year. And Sarah, again, from Books and Junk, was talking about wanting to do a reading of it for the first time. So she and I are going to buddy up together. I'm really, really excited to reread this. I There are lots of things that I find problem, problematic about it, but also lots of things that I absolutely adore. And so I'm really interested to kind of get back into it and see if I still like it as much as I did the first couple times or if those problematic elements have become more problematic. I'm really interested to see what Sarah has to say. Uh, I found that this book can be really divisive, but because it can be really divisive, it makes for some really good conversations. So, and at least it's not Twilight. Am I right, guys? Um, next up is another buddy read. This is The Just City by Joe Walton. I'm just going to read you the inside flat because that does it better than I could. Created as an experiment by the time-traveling goddess Pallas Athene, The Just City is a planned community planned community populated by more than 10,000 children and a few hundred adult teachers from all eras of history, along with some handy robots from the far human future, all sat down together on a Mediterranean island in the distant past. What else do you need? It's kind of a, a rewrite. It's a historical but fantasy. There's Socrates and Plato, but also robots. This is a group read that I'm doing with quite a few people. Um, Holly, Mercedes, Caitlin. I think there are others I'd have to check, but I'm going to double check and anybody who I'm reading this with, I will leave links to their channels down below. But yes, I'm really, really excited about this. It's getting a little bit further out of the science fiction fantasy river that I've been swimming in for the past couple months, which I am really excited to do. And I've heard really, really, really good things about Joe Walton's other book, Tooth and Claw. So high hopes. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, next up, we have one that you've probably seen all over the place, but my library hold finally came in. And that is Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho. I've heard this described as Jonathan Strange, but with ladies, Jonathan Strange, but with black people, and Jonathan Strange, but better. <laughs> so lots of comparisons to Jonathan Strange going on. But basically, this is about the one of the a major um, magician in England who happens to also be black. And so um, there's a lot of talking about uh, politics of the body and politics of race when it comes to that. But also it's about magic and London kind of disappearing and how uh, magic is kept from women but we have to borrow it from the fae and all of these things so this man kind of sets up a school for uh, lady witches in London to teach them something they've never been allowed to be teach taught before it teached oh my god it's so early guys it's like five in the morning early no, that they've never been allowed to be taught before and so it's just supposed to be all of those things wrapped up in a one bundle and the cover is gorgeous it's got deckled edges which you guys know I'm not a huge fan of but that's okay um but yes I am just really 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 excited to get through this um Rebecca Shinsky at Book Riot in addition to Caitlin and several other people have also given me glowing recommendations so I've got good feelings about it guys and then lastly the other book that I'm hoping to get through this month in paper format is another Halloween-ish read, and it is The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. I am already like a little bit of a way into this. I'm about 60, 75 pages into it, and so far it is hella creepy, you guys. It's basically about a 
father who takes in a group of children after all their parents like mysteriously die. Yeah, okay. Um, and he teaches them this very, like, it's very rigid. It's very classical. It's something he made up, but there's such strong strains of, like, fantasy and magic. Like, he basically has each child learning a different catalog at the library. So the girl that we are with, I think, what's her name? Carolyn. I was want to call her Claire, but her name is Carolyn. And so her catalog is languages. So she knows language every, she knows languages from those that are still spoken to those who have been wiped out for thousands of years to the language of animals. Um, some of her, like her brother, one of her other brothers has the category of war and violence. The, one of the other ones has the catalog, catalog of talking to animals or communing with animals. One can see into the future, one can see into the past, like the unknown parts of the past, obviously, and not just like reading history books, although that'd be a great catalog. Um, but father basically, so when the book starts, father has gone missing and father missing is like the son being gone from this world. So you can imagine how much uh, havoc that's causing for the, the these children. So they're trying to figure out where he went and how to get him back. It's full of fantasy, but it's super dark and creepy. It's very, very violent. Um, and it's got library in the title. So how can, you know, what's wrong with that? Can't really beat that. That's my chosen profession. That's where I like to chill. Um, but it's a very, very good blend of horror and science fiction and some fantasy elements. And I'm really, really excited to see where it all goes and uh, how it all pans out. And my friends, that wraps up my, probably by the time I end a 17 minute long, um, October TBR. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys had some snacks or a pot of coffee or something with you. Uh, let me know down below if you've done an October TBR. Feel free to link it to me. I'd love to watch it. Let me know if you've read any of these books or are wanting to read any of these books where I should start in the giant pile. And if nothing else, I guess I will just see you guys around the flip side. All right. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you. Bye.